Okay, so let's talk about some of the basics of this workflow. Perhaps you recall this previous video where we talked about doing a speed model in Blender. And this particular workflow was a bit different. It was focused on creating a concept first and then executing to the concept. So if you look at these designs here that we're looking at right now, these are different sketches. And what we're doing is we're looking at, you know, all kinds of different sketches and we're doing lots of iterations and trying to come up with a sketch that works. But this is a good process for 2D design as well as 3D designs. But the reason why this works well with 2D is because this tool that we're using SketchUp together is a very easy tool to use in 2D. And you can iterate quickly and come up with some really interesting things. So the process that we're going to look at now is a bit different. This is the process where instead of iterating in 2D in a sketch plane, we're going to iterate in 3D and we're going to iterate in 3D right here in Blender. And let me explain that. I'm going to just start off by, let's just select everything. I'm going to just hit X and delete it and shift A. And we're going to add a mesh and it's going to be a cube. And I'm going to probably uh, go ahead and assign it this SY cutter material. Now that material, just for those of you that uh, don't know, is found in the... KO special mats right here. It's SY cutter. It's, it's what I use for all the cutting inserts that I create. You're welcome to use any of these materials. It's KO emissive, KO metal, KO plastic paint, and special mats. These are all available and they come with the free version of KitOps as well as the pro version. And you're welcome to use any of these however you want. And you can resell them on your inserts and your K packs and whatever. So anyway, just just FYI, that's something to know. So I start with this material. And then what we'll do is we'll just kind of pull and push and come up with a shape that we think might work. And we might want to be thinking a little bit about our golden rectangle. Like that's something about like that, you know, whatever. And once we get it where we like it, let's just go ahead and let's say object and let's apply the scale. So now if I look over here, our scale is set to one, right? So I'm going to go back in here. The first thing we want to do is we want to shape our sci-fi box. And to do that, we'll jump into the shapers. These are not complete. I'm going to create these for you. I'll show you how they work. But before I do that, let me explain a little bit about KitOps. KitOps is this add-on over here. Right now, this is KitOps Pro. And this is a new version. Smart mode has been replaced by the word group mode now. So just so you know, but most of it's pretty much the same. And then up here, we have our favorite inserts. This is the part of the design magic insert collection these are you know, these are all unions so you can as you look at them these will all you know create a union on top of an object so that you get like that so that's what that does let's go ahead and right click and make this smooth and we'll, get, we'll auto smooth it you know you know do that in 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 here we'll go into normals make sure auto smooth is set like 30 is probably pretty good so anyway these k packs are going to be shown in here and in free, and if you have pro, you can actually click this little star and they'll actually show up as part of your favorite collection. There's up to three rows of favorites. So if I go down, for instance, to shapers, right, I can click this and now it's it's a favorite. So if I go, if I wanna switch between different K-Packs, remember these are all folders. These, these all represent folders on your hard drive. And by clicking on any one of these folders, you can see the different objects that are in them. Okay, so we're gonna go to shapers right here and let's think about what we wanna do. So there's a few different shapers here that you're going to get. You'll get this chamfer bevel, a filter, an, a rounded box, and this fillet top, right? So there's some couple different ones in this step bevel. So there's some things you can you can do with these. And let me show you kind of how that works. Now, again, if you have free, you don't get snap modes. But if you have pro, you have snap modes. And if I had that insert, it's going to go in here. And I can use the scroll wheel at any time to add that. So I'm going to escape out of that. And I'm going to basically turn off all the snap modes and show you how you would do this in free. And let's just turn off a face orientation so we don't get that red look to it. So I'm going to add this insert and I'll put it in here and I'll scroll my mouse wheel and I'll get it, you know, maybe somewhere like it's not square. It's not in the right place. Right. But I know that that's the X direction. Right. X is up here. I know green is Y. If I go to my item for this. Right. Let's just click in here an item location X and Y. If I just set those as zero, I know that we're, we're smack dab in the middle, right? The other thing I can do is I can uh, come in here and I can just click these buttons as well. So once we have this done, I'm going to go into our parallel projection uh, and wireframe mode. And I'm just going to move this out so that this little line right here just barely, barely comes out. So scale Y I just barely, barely sneaks out of here. So that's why, because it's doing a Boolean subtraction. So if I look at our object here, 
you'll see that in the modifiers, it's got this difference, right? And it's a difference, it's a Boolean subtraction. It's running the fast subtraction, not the exact. And I do that because it's faster. Now, if I want to, I can go into preferences under Kit Ops, under the general tab, and I can set my Boolean solver to exact or fast. I leave it at fast, and then if I want to later, I'll punch them into the exact mode if I need it. But so once I've got this done, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna select my object and I am gonna scale it. And then once I've scaled it, out past the end of it, you'll see that now we have a surface. Now, if I want to adjust that surface, I can move it up and down like this. And I can also mirror it. So let me show you how that works. If I just come over here and I make sure I'm in group mode and I want to mirror on the Z axis and boom, I've mirrored it. So you can see I've cut that out. If you don't have KidOps Pro, the way you want to mirror it is just go to this object right here. And what you're going to do is let's go ahead and toggle the stack. This is an add-on that comes with Blender and it's called modifier tools. And I always leave it on. It puts these four buttons up here and it makes it real easy. Toggle the stack back and forth. And what I'll do is I'll just go under here and I'll say add a modifier and I'll do a mirror. The axis is going to be the Z axis. Okay. And then we want to target this object. And now we have that. So that's how you would do that with free. So now that we have kind of a shape that we might like, let's go ahead and go into the bevel and let's look at this. And so I've got one segment, which I want to leave that, but I can change this so that that changes that chamfer angle, right? And then this bevel will change how round that is. And so now we've got that done. We can go ahead and let's look at the top view, right? So let's, let's go over here and I'm going to, I'm going to take this fillet top. So, uh, I'm going to select my object again. And remember in kit ops, if I select the insert and add, it's going to look at the insert and go, oops, that's a, that's a KitOps insert. What is the target of that insert? The target is right here. So it'll select that automatically. So I can just go in here, add insert, and I can hit the F key face, which will put it on the face, but we don't want it on the face. It turns out we're going to need it on the vertex, right? So we're going to put it right there in the middle, which is the vertex. If I, use a, if I look at wireframe, you'll see that that snapped right to that middle vertex, right? So let's turn that off. I'm going to go to the top view, the seven key. I'm going to scale this up a little bit so that it's just, and again, we're going to go just a tad outside of this thing. So I'm going to go like here. Now notice that this, this curve is a bit different. It's elongated in the same stretch direction as the object. Now, if I don't want that, I can say control a scale and then I'll get it. And then I just need to adjust that, that bevel right in here, right here. So I can adjust the bevel amount right in this area. But you know what? I kind of want that. I kind of like that idea of this thing kind of cutting back a little bit like that. One of the things that you're going to see is that we've got a lot of these wireframes around here. So if you go into preferences and you look at the add-ons, you'll see we have something called KitOps Toggle VP Display. It's another add-on. It comes with KitOps Free and KitOps Pro. So what it does is it toggles the display mode of the selected objects. It also aligns verts, which we'll talk about later. So to toggle this display mode, you want to use View 3D, Control plus Alt plus Shift plus Z. So the three modifiers plus Z, and that'll toggle. Let's just show you what that does. So I'll go in here and I'll say Control Shift Z1, bounding box, perfect. Two, it's solid. Three, it's wireframe. So this allows us to basically take a lot of these wires, you know, whatever we have selected, and, and turn them into bounding boxes so we can kind of see what we're working on. Okay, so a quick note, uh, notice that we're getting a little bit of a shading artifact here. And there's a couple things we can do here. It's really because of the way these things are intersecting with each other, right? So if we look at, if you just look at the wireframe mode, for instance, we've got this little, kind of this little, this little thing right here, and it's got a vertex here. It doesn't have one going down. So I can just convert it to mesh and connect those if I want, or kind of a better way to do it is just to take, you know, take one of these objects. Let's go in and let's look at this one to see. Yeah, that's the one we want. So let's take that one and I'm going to kind of zoom up on here. I'm going to scale this in the Y direction only. So as I do that, I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to just keep moving it until I don't get that. I just need to find a place that I like the shape and I don't have it. And I think that's it right there. You know, I just want to let you know that's how you can fix that. And then when you later on and when you convert to mesh, if you want to, you can go in and stitch those vertices up. But most of the time you're probably not going to need to. The other thing you can do is you can always go in here and change the segments of that to, to something like maybe instead of 18, we'll do 24. Go to this one over here. This one uh, is set to 12, so we make that 24 also. And you're going to tighten it all up. And if we go into wireframe, we still don't, number of vertices is not that big of an issue here. So that's 
that's a, just, just a quick way to fix that. So let's show you a different insert and how it can work as well. So I'm going to go ahead and select our object and I'll go in here and let's grab this rounded box one. And I'm going to add that insert with face mode selected and it'll snap right on here and I'll just move it around like this. So it's going to give me a little bit of a detail line there and I'm going to go into the front view and just I'm going to move it out just a little bit and you can see what's happening is that it's giving me a very similar shape to what we have. So if I want to mirror this perfectly, what I can do is just go in this bevel right here. And I'll just say apply and then I can tab into it and I can just select these and I'll just shrink them a little bit. Something like that. If I want to go into solidify, I can just turn on this and it's going to make it fatter. It's going to make that bevel fatter. So, you, can, you know, you can see what's going on there. And then the screw, if I just adjust this number, it's going to go in and out, right? So if I want to go all the way through, I can do that. Or the other, other thing I could just, I could actually just pull it out like this, like that. And then I just mirror this along the X axis and we'll see that it just shows up over here. So a lot of cool things you can do that. The other thing you can do with this, of course, is if I hadn't applied that bevel, I could make those round corners by just adding more. Let me show you that real quick. So I'll go into here, this object, I'm going to add this insert here on the face and, uh, you know, pull it in here. Let's go to the bevel over here and I'm going to make this, let's say eight. And now you can see that that's a round corner. And just take it and let's move it over here and let's mirror it on the X and the Y. So we have it over there and now we have kind of a shape. So we're starting to, to flesh this out. And actually at this time, it's probably a good time to save what we're doing. At this time, we might want to go ahead and convert the whole thing to a mesh. So let's show you that real quick. So I'm going to take this object and I'm going to say convert to mesh, remove unused wires. And that gets rid of all the wires and everything. And now we're ready to get started adding the next level of detail. Okay, so I actually removed those little uh, round rectangles. I didn't want those yet. I'm not ready to convert to mesh. I'm gonna continue with some other inserts and I'll show you which ones I wanna use. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna look at these details. And I wanna grab this one, this medium detail right here. And it's a big, heavy one. So I'm gonna add that, you know, I'll select our object, face mode, add the insert here. And let's, you know, and, and what's kind of cool about this is that it gives you a lot of interesting stuff. And I may want to put it, you know, put it somewhere else. Maybe put it over here on this side and see what happens or even put it on an angle and see what happens. So you can kind of, you know, as you do that, you're going to get something that's very different. So let's just hit the, the center of that thing on on the, on the object and let's go here. Now, now notice that we're on an angle. So we're going to have to switch to local here. And now we can, you know, we can basically manipulate this in a local mode. And a lot of these objects are created in a way so that when you stretch them, they don't look stretched, right? There's, I mean, this little angle may be a little bit, but they're not too bad. I mean, so you can actually, you know, layer them on top of each other if you want. I'm going to take this, I'm going to mirror it about the Y, you know, so I've got one over there. Uh, and maybe, maybe I'll, I'll shrink it or maybe, yeah, I'll shrink it a little bit and let's just go ahead and mirror it on the X too. Oops. And now this is a good example. So now it's not actually showing. So we're going to have to move it out just a little bit so they don't overlap and then they're going to, it's going to work. All right. Okay. So once that's done, I'm going to go over here and I'll select our object or I can leave these selected. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to add that same insert. I'm going to put it up here at the top, hit the V key because I know that the vertex is centered. So, and I can, I can start to you know, manipulate this as well. So I'm starting to get, as you can see, I'm starting to get some interesting, interesting shapes here. I'm not sure that they're the, the right ones, but you know, as I move this around, it's going to actually generate some interesting stuff. Now let's go back and say, I want to move this one around so I can right click on it and say kit ops relocate insert. And so now I can actually move it where I want to scale it down, you know, use my scale, you know, maybe I just do something like this. Let's put it right there and maybe maybe we stretch it completely out all the way to the end here so we get this kind of thing looking like this so you kind of get the idea that we're able to create lots of different kinds of objects let's just take these this right here is mirrored about the z so it's going to go down in here uh no let's not let's not do it. let's let's just leave it let's focus on making this symmetrical in the X and Y, but not the Z, this particular design. I like just picking two out of three if possible. Uh, you know, it's up to you how you want to do that. But, uh, you know, I'm going to go back in here and let's grab this other one right here and 
with this selected, I'm gonna add the insert and it's on a V also. So I'll click here and I'm gonna move it in like this and out like that. And this does have a, some, some radiuses, so it's not a good, it's not as good for this kind of work because of these radiuses, but it, you know, of course we do have that kind of stretching. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually moving it so I get this nice thin element right there. So if I look at that, this is what I'm getting. I got this little rim area right here and that. I can see making these displays. Maybe a folding keyboard comes out of here. That could be kind of cool. You know, maybe some displays pop up from this angle. I mean, now I'm starting to think of how, how, how I want this to work. Um, and so that's really kind of the, the gist of using KidOps to do this. Now, I should mention that with KidOps Pro, it comes with tons of objects, right? So you've got all these cutters, complex cutters, so you can see all these cool cutters. Like, I mean, let's take, for instance, this, you know, you can take this and add that insert right here. And you can kind of start to see that, yeah, that's, uh, that, we want to mirror that again on the X axis. So it's over here. So you're starting to get an idea of with all these different inserts, you can do a lot of interesting, really interesting things, right? And, and that's one of the big parts of kit ops. Okay, let's take this object. I want to move it down a little bit. I just don't want to move it down because I'm going to actually show you a, a really cool parting line trick that we can use. And before I do that, let's go ahead and convert this to a mesh, remove unused wires, and now we, you know, tab into it, you'll see that the whole thing's a mesh. So we're in good shape there. So what I want to do is I want to use this parting mirror. I'm going to put that so I can create a parting line right on this surface here. So I'll go ahead and add the insert and I'm going to stick it right on that surface. Now let's go ahead and move it to the center, but look how bad the smoothing artifacts are. Now, why is that? Well, it's because one of the inserts actually had as a modifier, it had one of these weighted normals. And so if you put anything after a weighted normal, it's going to screw things up. So real easy fix for that. We just go into here with this selected. We go in here, look at our normals, look at our geometry data, and just hit this clear custom foot normals, and now we're good. Now you can see that little, that little insert cut out quite nicely. So what I want to do with this, I'm going to tab this, tab into this, and you can see I've got these little dots, right? So I'm going to take these little vertices. I'm just going to move them out, something like this, maybe, and maybe I'll move it down you know, like this, maybe you move this one out a little bit more. You can kind of see what's going on here, I think. And, uh, and this might go like here. And then if I hit the E and then, you know, of course, Z, you know, I'm sorry, Y, tell us why we're in local mode. Uh, we can go down to here and then E just, we'll just drag it out something like this. I may want to make this more of a radius. So if we look at this modifier, we have this bevel and we have uh the amount there and if i go into my item my bevel weight for the vertex data is zero and if i add it if i add some here i can do that i can change it from five to six vertices this one i think i'm going to keep pretty sharp um and move these around a little bit now oops now i want to get these things to line up so the way i'll do that is i'll select them both and remember our toggle vp display you want to use Control alt plus x y or c not Y because C is real close to you for getting the, the Y directions. This is the X direction. I want to scale it so it's Control Alt X and that just knocks those out perfectly, right? And if I want to make sure these are Z Control Alt, like for instance, if this one gets out of whack a little bit, move it up, and I want want them to be averaged Control Alt Z. That's good. And I might make that down just a little more. Maybe make this. I'm going to tab out of this, and we're going to look at, at, at how we change the width of this, right? So I'm going to go into this solidify, and if I do this, it's going to get fatter and thinner. So I like it about kind of a thin little line there. And if I go to the screw, it's going to get deeper also. But I can also just simply just do it this way and just move it, right? So if I want that, I can go like that, and, and then that's done. Now, another thing I can do is I can tab into this. So I tab into it. I can also say... Shift D, right? So now I'm duplicating a vertice. I'm gonna look up here. Okay, so now I may say E, let's move it here, like here, here, and here. And just select these two and Control Shift C to line those up. These two, Control Shift X to line those up. And uh, maybe, you know, maybe move these up just a tad, something like this. And we're gonna get 
something that goes across there. Now, I may want these. Let's see. I want these to fit inside of there. So they're kind of a little bit hidden. And that means that maybe we take this and we're going to move it down. And maybe it'll take this and give it a little radius. So you can kind of see how this this all works, right? Give it a little radius. So we have a little radius on those two. And then I can come back here and look at this. This is cutting off in there. So I may say I want this to this to cut off also in here, something like this. Well, it doesn't maybe, maybe I just delete that vertice and just move this straight, move this straight down. Anyway, you get the you get the idea. So I'm just basically kind of working with this to try and figure out how to how to best you know create some parting lines on this object. And then you know once I've got that done, you know tab out of it, and I've got my parting line set up. And I may want to say, okay, I want something on these on the end here, and uh, maybe the end has another object. And I might go into my the cutters that come with KitOps. And let's see what we have. We have some inserts also, like, so I might take one of these round inserts and add this here, F. Yeah, that might be nice. Okay, I'm gonna stick that in there and I'm gonna mirror that about the X axis. So it's over here. And you know, you can start to see what's going on here with our object, right? So we're starting to get some kind of an interesting thing going on. We've got the parting lines that are, are interesting. I might want to change, you know, when I break this apart, I could change the materials of these. One of the interesting things I can also do, which is really cool, is let's go in and let's add a little something on this side. So I'll go back into our cutters medium. I like that one. So I'm going to grab, let's grab one of these tube things, tube like things. And I'm going to add this insert on here and scale it down. I'm gonna hit the end key so I can move it over like this. And as you recall, let's hold the alt key down. And when you hold the alt key down, it actually can rotate the insert. So I'm gonna put that in like this. And let's look at, yeah, something like that. And let's move it up just a tad, maybe scale it a little bit. Okay, so you can also do something like Shift D, right? So that's duplicate along the Y. I'm gonna move it over here and you're seeing that as long as we're in group mode, it's gonna give us a nice copy of it. And then I can say shift R to re replicate. Here we have it. And then I can select all of those. I can just go down here and select them all and make sure that I just center them, you know, on the object so that they, they work right. So, and then again, I'll select them all. Control shift C, just turn them into wires so I can see what's going on. But we're starting, you're starting to see that I'm starting to detail, detail it out. And we've got a hero element over here. Probably want to put some displays in here. I think I'll play around with that a little more. Oh, w one other thing I'll show you. Design Magic is a set of tools. Like if you look at this, it's got, a, it's got a lot of different things that you can add for building, building models and objects. And it's got, you know, positives and negatives and cutters. And it's got arrayed items. So you can use array, different kinds of arrays. Um, uh, including it's got geometry arrays kind of things like this hex thing, which is really cool. We're going to show that probably later on. Uh, it's got some cabling tools and some and some cable inserts, but some ways to create cables. Uh, a lot of different venting vent, vent details that you want to add to stuff. But one of the things it's got are these two these these two widget things, right? So so one of the widgets is actually really simple. This little blivet thing, right? So if I want to add this, I might come over here and say. Hold, you know, click here and say uh, in group mode, um, which means that it's going to have to also be in pro mode. We're going to add the insert over here, and I'm going to scroll the mouse down. And we're going to make this little tiny thing, right? I just want to put it right here. I'm going to stick it right here. And before I drop it, I'm going to hit the shift key. Drop here. I'll put one down here. Hit another shift key. Drop. I'll put one up on this surface right here. Shift, drop. Maybe put one over here. Oh, on the side here, on the side right here. We'll go in here and I'll hold the shift key again and drop and then put a, one last one. We'll stick it right, right here. Okay. And so now we've got the, all these little inserts with them set like that. I want to mirror the, these on the Y. So they're going to be on the Y and the X. This one actually gets, this gets mirrored on the, uh, oh, on the Y and the X. Yeah, so I'm just going to mirror all of these on the Y and the X. You'll see that they're showing up on both sides now. And uh, 
I think that's about it. I think that's, I, oh, we didn't get this guy right here. Here, that one. And X and Y. So now we have them all set up. So that little shift trick is a really nice trick. And if we look at our object now, see what it looks like. Now, uh, I guess I could, I do need to show you one more thing. Let's go into here and let's look at these little dots, for instance. So I'm going to take these little dots that we just created and I'm going to give them a different material. So let's go into our KO metal materials and I'm going to choose this steel mat and I'm going to add that material to that little object right there. That material. So that's a little kid ops material. So if I look at it in EB, you'll see that nothing has happened, right? But if I, if I select this object here and I go in and I add a slot, a material slot, right? And then I add that same material. This is the add material. And we turn this on. Now you see that we have, that's a different material right there, right? So that's, you know, I can do that with, you know, any, any of these, you know, if I go into here and let's say this is, this is a kind of an elaborate one, but the cutter, I'll turn off group mode so I can just select this cutter, this, this thing right there. I'm going to add that material. And you can see now that it is showing that as an aluminum. And so that's how that works. And so because I've already created these other inserts, I can't really change the colors of them without actually going into the model and doing that. But still, you get the idea. This is kind of a cool thing. And then the other, you know, let's say we want to take this object and we just select on here and we'll grab maybe something like a dark anodized and say add that material to that. And now we have this. And you can start to see, you know, things are kind of coming together. Okay, so uh, I decided I'm going to remove this. I don't like this 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 detail. So again, one of the nice things about KitOps is we can just, if, as long as we haven't converted things to mesh, we can actually go off and, and remove it. But notice that when I select stuff, I'm just getting one thing. I want to get delete the whole insert. So in this case, I need to be in group mode. And once I do that, then I can hit the X key and delete, and it's going to get rid of it. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a handle here. So I'm going to look over here. I've got this handle insert. It's one of the ones I'll, I'll provide for you guys and add that insert here. And let's, uh, I don't know, let's just put a scroll it down. Let's make it a little, little, little bit. Yeah. Maybe, maybe something like this. Okay. And then with it set like that, uh, we'll just go ahead and align it. Okay. Now this is interesting. I aligned it, but because we don't, these lines are only Two different ones, right? So I really need to go over here and say, give me it on the Y axis. And then I also want to do it on the X axis there. So there. So now we're aligned correctly. And of course, we can just mirror that on the X axis. So we have one over there. And let me just take a look at it and see what we have. Yeah, I think that could, that can probably work. So that gives me that. Now, now, one of the things that might be one of the hero elements. I might put some displays in here, like I said, or displays in here and a keyboard coming down here. Uh, uh, and this is just, you know, the backside of it. Maybe we could put some uh, connectors or something on there. Maybe something comes up out of here. I don't know. Just, you know, playing around. But And that's really kind of a quick view of creating something that's, you know, interesting and, and something that we can play around with and get a feel for. And the whole idea is that you can generate these really fast this way. Using this technique, you can kind of keep on cranking out lots and lots of different variations. So uh, the next video, I'm going to talk about how you can create your own inserts. So you don't have to just use ours, how you can create your own. And then I have the final video where I'm going to actually build something with you guys. So, so thanks for watching and we'll see you online. Bye.